Now, uh, suicide is not an option. That's why this morning we're raising awareness uh, to uh, suicide. Now, they are the ones left behind after loved ones commit suicide. Some never recover from the shock or loss. Others sink into depression and sometimes also attend suicide. We ask, does society care about those left behind or it, is only, it only allows the vicious cycle to continue to mourn another death? Now, this is a report by Wendy Lai. Also, do remember that some of the, those that granted the interviews did not want to be identified. Let's check it out. Suicide across the globe is regarded as bad death, a moral evil that brings shame and dishonor to family and community. It is a taboo. Attempted suicide is criminalized under Ghana's laws and is seen amongst religious groupings. Families with suicide history are usually treated like outcasts, with young men and women facing difficulties obtaining marital suitors in some instances. Hope, not his real name, lost his childhood friend, Rich, also not his real name, to suicide. He believes his friend may have committed suicide over poor academic performance at the senior high level. One day we were just there and we were making fun that, hey, so if your results come and it's very bad, then it means you're going to, you kill yourself. Then we laughed. I thought we were just joking. We went to check and the results were totally different from what he told us. But his friend took his life. I had a knock around three. I was told, oh, your friend is dead. I, I didn't believe. I just went there, I entered the house, saw my friend lying down, so probably because of the academic uh, competition too, it might have had an impact on his decision. Left in a state of shock and denial, Hope resorted to his family and a female friend for support. The story of Faith isn't any different. She lost her husband to suicide. Battered by him, she left for the hospital. Upon her return, he was gone. The children were outside playing, unaware of his death. I knocked the door severally and later forced it open, and I saw his lifeless body. He was suffering from a chronic disease. His death brought untold hardship on her, but that wasn't the worst. She's still suffering from the stigma. I decided to leave my children in the care of my sister, so I also end it all. But I realized I would overburden my sister, who already has six children. On one occasion, a drunk nearly attacked me and accused me of killing my husband. I had to seek refuge in someone's shop. Both hope and faith have not received any form of counseling, but try to live normal lives. Community psychologist and researcher on suicide prevention, Johnny Ando Arthur, says stigma does not help the recovery of those who have lost their loved ones. It care. They need understanding. He admits that the country has not done much on a suicide prevention plan. We don't have any suicide prevention plan in Ghana. And without a plan, there's not much we can gain. These guidelines and policies really even uh, highlight how the media should even broadcast suicide news. Sometimes we over sensationalize it. It's as if they just want to start a story, but they are not concerned about the very needs of these people. Checks with the Ghana Police Service reveal the service has no national statistics on suicide. CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesio Say admits they have succeeded in providing mental health services at regional and district hospitals, but more needs to be done. But we want to go down further, even to the chief's compounds, to the communities, so that you don't need to travel far. We have not got there yet. We are gradually getting there. But you require resources, resources, human resources, financial resources. And we are trusting that in the next few years, you'll get there. What happens to those who are left behind? The police, as you said, the homicide unit, they offer maybe the first or amongst the first to come into contact with this. 
So our linkage with them will then be for them to refer such people to us. So for now, the, unfortunately, there is no such structure. We now need to put in place the structure. We need to meet with the police and together arrange how such situations will go on. He says in other jurisdictions, there is a toll-free line dedicated for mental health, but laments the telcos in Ghana do not support it. A dedicated toll-free line. We've managed to get a line, but we are not announcing yet because it's not been activated. To activate it means that when somebody calls to the line, it will be free to that person, but not free to everybody. Somebody has to pay the bill. The telecos are not prepared, and I'm emphasizing, the telecos are not prepared to take up the bill as their uh, corporate social responsibility. But it went around and we realized that you'll pay not less than 9,000 Ghana cities a month. And for a poor agency like ours, it's difficult for us to pay. Globally, strengthening the capacity of countries, especially in developing nations, for early warning, risk reduction, and management of national and global health risk must be a priority, as stated in the Sustainable Development Goal 3. If you or someone you know is considering self-harm, please get help. Call the Mental Health Authority on 050-99-14046. Wendy Lai, TV3. Suicide is not an option. That's a report by Wendy Lai. And in studio, we've been joined by Gloria Boatima Ando, who is a suicide prevention activist. Just to talk more on the issue, let me get your, your, your thoughts on this one, Gloria. Uh, do you right. think enough is being done uh, in creating awareness on suicide? Um, I would say it is not really because um, a lot of people are taking their lives and they need to know who to call. So let's say, for instance, I want to take my life. Mm. Who am I calling? Who am I talking to? Aside my mom, my dad, or friends. Maybe I don't want my friends to know this is a thought I'm having. There's supposed to be a number out there that at any point, any time, any day, I can just look at it and go like, okay, this is a person I can talk to. Mm -hmm. This is a number I can call and then somebody will attend to me. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to do more. Um, of course, I agree with you that we need to do more. But uh, generally about mental health, I, I realize that once someone says they are depressed, you know, they are sad, people write it off here in Ghana. Yeah. But elsewhere, there, there are people you can go to, mm. people try to talk to yeah. you. Mental health, we don't talk about it much mm. here in Ghana. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, we don't talk about mental health much in Ghana. Mm. It is something that we've overlooked, that, but it is really happening. I think we need to. And it's because we don't have people to talk to. Mm. Like you are saying, if I'm having suicidal thoughts and then there's nobody to talk to or mental illness, nobody is talking to me, what do I do? I'll just be there and before you realize, I'm going. Let's just talk about uh, a few courses. Uh, what will lead someone to want to take their own lives? All right. Uh, most of them, I deal with the, the youth a lot of times. Mm. That is being low. We go to the secondary schools and we talk to the youth. You realize that bullying. Bullying? Fam yes. Mm. Kids, family not having time for kids. Mm. Failure, exams, failures, relationship problems. And this is on a secondary school that's level a second because that's what your foundation is. Yes. Mm. And even with us, sometimes you go for loans and you're not able to pay. You want to do business. Mm. You go for loans, you're not able to pay. And the next thing is the person is on your neck. What do you do? You don't have any money. You're like, let me just kill myself. And then at the end of the day, nobody will follow me in my grave to take the money. Mm. So there are pressures of life as well, social life, pressures of life. You feel neglected. You feel there's no hope, no job, no money. A lot of things can cause suicide. Let's talk about your foundation, uh, Winglow Family International, okay. and uh, what it does to create awareness on suicide. Okay, so Winglow Family International is a family, is a support base for people who don't have anyone to talk to. Mm. So it's more like we have a team, like a family. We have psychologists, we have histologists, we have uh, medical health, we have lawyers right. and counselors that we help to talk to people who feel suicidal. Mm. So basically, Winglow family is a helping, we are helping the people out there or the youth out there who thinks that if I'm having suicidal thoughts, I don't have anyone to talk to. I can't talk to my friend because my friend is going to talk to another person. So we are there, you can call, you can text. 
tell us your issue, then we'll give you to a, a psychologist. Mm. If it's a counselor, we'll give you to a counselor and then you can talk to them. So um, can you give us uh, some of the numbers to call? All right. And uh, you, you, you were saying earlier that you have also a text line that yeah, can yeah. help because people need these things. There yeah. are days that uh, I've, I've been on social media and people just put out that they need someone to talk to. But then some of us are also scared to approach and yeah. say of course i'm always there you can talk to me so if we know there's a helpline that we can go to it will help a lot all right so um with winglo family international um the text line is um if you're using mtn mm. you can type rich to seven thousand rich rich to seven thousand to seven thousand and if you're using vodafone airtel or tigo you can text um one nine zero four and it's the same reach to 1904. Mm. We'll quickly call you as soon as we get the text message. So uh, reach to 700 yeah. uh, is 7000 yeah. is for MTN only. Yes. And then 149, reach to 149 is for other networks. Yeah. Yes. Um, now let's talk about what's happening next week, Friday. Okay. So what, what is happening on next week, Friday, is uh, the Suicide Prevention Awareness. We are creating awareness. We want people to know they are not alone as a family. We are telling people that they should come on board and listen to the suicidologist, that is um, Dr. Um, Professor Joseph Osafo um, at Legon. He's a psycholo clinical psychologist and a suicidologist. We have a season, a motivational speaker, a Gipsianti who will be there, or Henry Gipsianti will be there. And then we have um, someone from the Ghana police to talk about the legal aspects of suicide. Aside committing suicide, you are not, it's just not on your own. Mm. You are a property of the country. Right. So there are legal implications to that. So we are mm. actually going to talk to them about it. They will go home educated and then it is open. There will be psychology. There will be a team of psychologists. Where is this happening? All that at Accra Mall. Mm. Where the, 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 um, the runabout is. Mm. Yes, so we will mount a tent there and then you can walk in. Volunteers, if you want to volunteer, you can join us. And then if you have anything that is beating your mind, you can also come join. And, then, mm. and it's free. All it's right. Free. Thank you very much, Gloria. Gloria Boatima Andor is a suicide prevention activist. And she says you can call or text uh, when you're using MTN 7000. Uh, you text just rich to 7000 and then you'll be attended to. Now,